Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, I'm just going to be sharing my thoughts on the first day of spring practice of 2024 for our volunteers. And I can tell you, first and foremost, that we look really good, bigger, faster, stronger. I was just talking to GY down in the comment section of the practice footage, and I was telling him, hey, man, this looks like a playoff team. And I sincerely believe that. Now, it is just day one. Okay, there's no pads on. Still a lot to be seen, but just from a physical perspective, from the size, from the speed, the way that we're moving around. I think that we've got everything that we're going to need moving forward. Now, we have to get on to the injuries because that's going to be something that a lot of people will probably be asking themselves, hey, where is this player at? Where is this player at? So we'll get that out of the way so we don't have to keep on talking about that too much uh, You know, while we're going through all of these videos throughout spring. So number one, Brew McCoy is going to be on a non-contact list. He's not going to be doing any contact stuff. He will be kind of, you know, maybe going through some routes and things like that, but as far as you know, the actual contact portion of it, he won't be doing it. And he doesn't really need to because he's a veteran and we know that he's going to be the starter uh, at the same position that he played at last season. So it's going to be huge having him back. Obviously, we know what he means to this entire program. The next player is going to be Peyton Lewis. Now, Peyton Lewis is coming in as a true freshman running back and P and I love him. Okay, we love him on this channel. We think that he's a guy that will contribute a lot in 24. Once he does get a chance to get out there on the field again, it's just yet to be seen. But he should be able to participate in fall camp. And he probably, you know, as far as I'm concerned, will be fitted into that three-back rotation. And he could end up being one of the better backs in that rotation. Now, Elijah Herring is the third guy that's going to be on a no-contact list. And it sucks for him because our linebacker room is really deep this season, okay? So he's going to be missing out on all of spring, which is important, okay? It's mostly just to get guys back acclimated to playing with the team and to learn some different things, maybe move to some different spots. Uh, but it's always a competition. So it sucks for Elijah Herring. I really think that he's going to end up on the outside looking in as far as the linebacker rotation goes. And I liked how Coach Ames looked out there. Okay, you can tell he's teaching the fundamentals very well. It looks like he's much more of a teacher, and that's important to me. Something else that he said, I guess it was like a couple of weeks ago now, uh, in his initial press conference, being introduced to the team was that he looks for speed, 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 speed. That's what I love in my linebackers. I want them to be aggressive and to play with speed. And I like the fact that he comes out on the first day and he's teaching. That's very important because you get that foundation set with your players. Hey, this is what we're going to be doing. Okay, you continue to enforce those points, drive them home over and over and over again early on so that it becomes second nature. And then the players can in turn play with their, you know, natural speed and not have to overthink and overanalyze. I feel like we did too much of that this past season, and especially with guys like Herring. I mean, he just looked lost a lot. So hopefully he can dumb things down and get guys playing fast. That's going to be big for us. Now, another player that won't be participating very much in spring, but he will be, you know, I guess at some point doing some contact stuff is Arion Carter. And, you know, again, it's kind of like Herring, but I don't think that Arion is in as bad of a place as Herring is because Arion really, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is the better player. And we're anticipating that he's going to be starting right next to Keenan Pilly. So, you know, it does kind of suck to know that he won't be participating very much. Um, but, you know, I do think that at some point we'll get to actually see him play, you know, hopefully in the orange and white game, because he does need to continue to show and prove that he can be one of the starters on this team, or, you know, at least in that two, probably two linebacker rotation or the two deep rotation. And we also got to see Edwin Spillman, who physically looks really good. He's number 47, and that's what Arian Carter wore in spring this past season. And I think that the staff did that on purpose because they see something in Edwin Spillman the same way that they saw uh, with Arian Carter. So I'm expecting for Edwin to have a really big spring and also have a really big fall and uh, to be one of those guys that could potentially push for that two to three, uh, you know, deep rotation at linebacker. And we've also got Javante Spragans, who's going to be very limited this spring, but he's another one just like Brew. He's he's a starter, right? I mean, we already know that, so we don't have to worry about him too much. Uh, Masai Reddick, who, you know, really probably would have benefited some from being able to participate in spring because there's a lot of, uh, you know, battles, I feel like, that's going to be coming up this spring as far as the two and three deep at different positions on that offensive line. So sucks for Masai, but you hope that he will be able to get in some good mental reps. And if he does get the opportunity to get out there and show what he can do physically, we need as much depth as possible. And we're going to get into this in just a minute, but the offensive line, it already looks really, really deep just off of day one. So Nathan Leacock, okay, he's going to be limited. He's another one that really 
could have benefited from being able to go through the entire spring. I think he had some injuries this past spring, um, and that kind of hindered him from even getting out on the field. He had some drops last season. We want to make sure that he can come in this spring and correct the areas where he was maybe not producing at as well this past season. So it definitely sucks for him. I mean, our wide receiver room is another one that's really, really deep. You hate to see guys transfer out because they can't get on the field. And I'm really hoping that Nathan Leacock will get his opportunity so that we can retain him on this team because he can be a very, very dynamic football player. He, as far as I'm concerned, could be that Brew McCoy once Brew leaves next season. So we definitely need Nathan. I'm just hoping that he can get some more playing time throughout the spring. We also have Christian Charles, who's limited, and he's always had some injury issues. He's a guy that could play, you know, safety, star, maybe even corner. I think he started off playing corner. And, it, you know, again, it sucks that he's going to be missing probably a lot of what is the most critical parts of spring practice because that secondary room, just like the other rooms that we talked about, is really, really deep, and you hate to see guys getting passed up. All right, now on to the fun stuff, starting off with Nico. He looked really good, okay? Quarterbacks in general looked great. Right. So Nico, definitely he's gained some weight. He might be up 10 to 15 pounds from where he was at in our bowl game versus Iowa. And I read what a lot of the insiders were saying about him in practice today. And they're saying, hey, man, he looked really sharp. He was very crisp. I think that he's going to have a heck of a year. Now, Coach Hypo did talk about Nico not necessarily being a guy that wants to stand up in front of the entire team and talk. That's kind of what I got from it. But he does a really good job of talking to players and being a leader on an individual basis, like in a one on one setting. So I think that that's fine, but at the same time, we'll kind of see how, how big of a deal that is. It's something that I have been thinking about as we've got closer and closer to spring practice. Nico doesn't really strike me as the type of a guy that has that personality that's going to be, hey, I'm going to stand up in front of the entire team and talk. Seems like he's much more personable uh, than that, but it may be something that he needs to try to get better at, uh, you know, as the season goes on. And, you know, I feel like he will do it whenever he needs to. So I'm not too concerned about that from Nico, but for sure. I mean, he looks the part to me. Now, Jake Merklinger, who is a true freshman, he also, man, he looks college ready. I mean, he looks like, I don't know. I mean, I would say he's over 200 pounds. He's at least 210, 215 pounds at six foot four. And we didn't really get to see him throw very much. But if he can get the offense down, if he can get that confidence that a quarterback needs, then he could end up being our quarterback number two, if need be. Gaston Moore is still here. And he's a veteran. He's been with Hypo for a while so he's gonna know this offense probably better than anybody else on this team okay especially in that quarterback room so a whole lot of good players right there and I you know I feel good about three deep uh at the quarterback position now on to the running backs they all look good Dylan Sampson looks like he's gained a little bit of weight I, I could say the same thing about Cam Selden uh you know Keith uh Bishop they all look really good pretty much picking up where they left off at from last season wide receivers Chris Brazel and Dante Thornton is going to be a battle. I believe that they'll probably be playing at the same position and they're about the same height, at least, um, you know, Dante Thornton might be about an inch taller. I think he's listed at six foot five and Brazel is listed at six, four, if I'm not mistaken, but Brazel's maybe a little bit longer as far as his arms and things like that. His catch radius might be a little bit longer than Dante's is, but Dante looks confident. Okay. He's making catches. And he looks like he's bulked up some. He might be about six foot five, 220, 225. Uh, whereas Chris Brazel, 6'4, probably about 200. He looks like he's bulked up some as well uh, from last season at Tulane. But that's going to be a crazy battle. It's two players that are sub 4'4 guys. They can high point footballs and they can take it the distance. So I would love to see some sort of a package where we can have them both out there on the field because I think that that's a nightmare on the outside along with Brew. And then you put Squirrel. In there at slot, Squirrel looks good. He looks like he's thickened up. I didn't get to see Mike Matthews or Braylon Staley, but I heard some good things about them today. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they will, uh, you know, continue to progress throughout spring. I think that they've got a really good opportunity to come out and be some ballers, be some playmakers. And, uh, I mean, man, that entire room is really, really deep. Chaz Nimrod, he looked good. I didn't get to see Caleb Webb. But, yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got a whole lot of ballers, y'all. And I think that we'll put up some crazy, crazy passing numbers and rushing numbers this season. A big part of the reason for that is going to be that offensive line. Lance Hurd, okay, he's big, he's mean, he's nasty. You can tell how quick, twitchy he is. He's got great footwork, great hand placement. You can tell that he's strong, okay? You can see that his hands are strong once they grab on. And again, y'all, this is just spring practice, right? So we're not really getting to see them run around and really hit with pads on. But you can tell, okay, like I've been around football for my entire life. I played for, what, 16, 17 years, something like that. 
So sometimes I can just tell, and I feel like the coaches are on the same page. Now, I also heard Coach Hypo speak about Lance Hurst saying, hey, he's got a lot to get figured out, especially with the tempo, things like that. It sounds like he might, and I, you know, I don't want to paint a bad picture of him or say this out of turn, but just from what I gathered from Coach Hypo, it sounds like he maybe needed to get in a little bit better shape, okay? I'll just put it that way. It sounds like he needs to get in a little bit better shape, get used to the tempo, and uh, that's something that's definitely going to come because it's rapid fire whenever you're out there with these guys practicing. You know, I've heard a whole lot, uh, you know, from the analysts, from the coaches, from players, and I know that it's going to be an up-tempo practice setting, and that's going to help get Lance Hurd in shape. Now, outside of Lance, okay, I saw some of Cooper Mays, uh, I believe, and he looked good. Dane Davis looked really, really good, okay? He looks like he's taking it up to another level. And our freshman, Gage Ginther, I was very impressed with him. Uh, Max Anderson, okay, he physically looks well put together. Uh, Jesse Perry also looks very well put together. I would say that this class of offensive linemen are coming in maybe more physically ready than what we've seen since Coach Heifel has, uh, you know, been up in Knoxville. And, yeah, I, I would say that that's, that's a really, really good group. And they could be pushing some guys, you know, some of those veteran guys for the second and third string spots. Now, Aiden Bustle is a guy who I talked about really liking playing at that left guard position. We've talked so much about, hey, who's going to be the starter there? Uh, it sounds like actually Aiden is being worked early on at the right side. And Shamrod Umarov, who we thought would be a tackle, is being moved to that left guard spot. At least that's kind of like what I saw. And that's also what I've been reading. So that's interesting. I think that he needs to gain some more weight. He looks a little bit thinner, I would say, um, you know, than what you would want out of your guards. Usually guards are a little bit bulkier uh, because they have to be able to block those big defensive tackles and all of that. So they've got to be very sturdy at the point of contact. And that's a little bit concerning for me. I'm just kind of wondering why they would have made that move. But hopefully it will work out. I really like Sham, and, you know, I think he's a really great player. I think he's got a whole lot of potential. But that battle at left guard is going to be one for us to watch for sure. I think that's probably the biggest battle that we need to keep a very close eye on throughout all of the offseason. Because if we can get a good left guard, somebody that we can trust a lot on a play-in and play-out basis, and really you want two there, right? You want to have that starter, then you want to have a guy behind him, and then maybe another one uh, that you feel pretty confident with. And I think that we can develop that. But if we don't, then we'll be in that transfer portal probably after spring, okay? That'll be very telling for us, uh, you know, as far as that goes. Now, on to tight end. I really, really like what I saw out of Ethan Davis. He looks like he's gained, I would say, at least 10, 10 to 15 pounds from this past season. He physically looks like he's ready to come out and be a starter in the SEC. Holden stays is big, too. Who wins that battle, right? I don't know who the starter is going to end up being. Holden stays is the older player, but Ethan Davis has obviously been with our balls longer. He knows the system better. So I don't know if we will have a for sure reading on that, probably until maybe about like a week or two out from our first game. So that's going to be a battle that will continue to kind of, uh, you know, be back and forth throughout all of the all season. And you're going to have to be a really good blocker. I can't wait to see how Ethan Davis looks blocking now that he's added that extra muscle mass. And I thought that he looked pretty good doing that last season too. I mean, a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, he's just not a great blocker, but I liked what I saw out of him just from a, uh, you know, fundamental perspective. While we're on the subject of tight ends, okay, number one, we'll talk about Miles Kitzman. I didn't get to see him, but I feel like he could be that third guy. You know, I think that that is probably his position to lose at this point. And he, maybe he could even work himself up. You know, I kind of doubt that, but he's a really good player as well. But Emmanuel Okoye, I think that the staff needs to go on ahead and make the move uh, back, you know, him moving from tight end to defensive end. Just try to dumb it down for him, okay? You put him over there on offense, and it's so much for a player that's barely played football to grasp trying to play offense. That's I think that that was too much from Jump Street, and I don't think that it's really doing him any favors. It's not doing the team any favors. I would like to see that move, that transition of Emmanuel Okoye moving from tight end uh, to a defensive end because I think that he could give us a lot right there. I mean, just imagine with what we've already got in that room, and we'll get to that in just a second, but imagine adding a guy like Okoye to that. I mean, that would be ridiculous. We're talking about being four to five deep on the defensive line with guys that can go, especially on the outside. So that's what I would like to see, uh, you know, as far as that is concerned. Now on to defense, we'll go ahead and talk about the defensive line. That room is deep. Those players look good, every single one of them. One of the players that really stuck out to me was Bryson Easton. I talked about him some last season that, hey, he needs to gain some weight. He talked about being under 300 pounds, and uh, you kind of said it braggingly, but that wasn't a brag. If you're playing defensive tackle 
in this system, you need to be, I mean, you know, you want to be about 300 pounds. So he looks like he's about there right now, and that's huge because I don't know if he's going to be a starter next to Big O, but he can be, right? We've also got big Elijah Simmons, who is definitely up over 300 pounds. He's very stout uh, in run support. We've got Omar Normalide. He's, you know, stout in run support, but he's a really good pass rusher. Uh, a whole lot of twitching is there. I like what I saw from David Hobbs. You know, he looks like he's bigger. It's like he's faster. It's like he's stronger. Caleb Herring, he definitely looks thicker. It looks like he's gained, I would say, at least 10 pounds uh, from last season. 10, maybe even 15 pounds. He looks really good. Joshua Josephs, he looks twitchy. You know, he looks bursty. Um, Tyree Weathersby, okay? I still think that he will end up being the strong side defensive end. Definitely. He's definitely gained some weight. He might be up to about 275, maybe even 280, and he's still twitchy. He still has that burst. Tyree West is, is another one at the strong side D in position. Kellen Lindstrom, I saw some of him. He looks really good physically, uh, you know, got the burst, all of that. Jackson Moy also, you know, big, stout guy, twitchy. Kind of puts me in the mind of, I would say, maybe like a little bit smaller, and not, not by much, maybe about five to seven pounds smaller than uh, Elijah Simmons, okay? They're very similar in their style of play. But, I mean, we're just super deep right there, man. I, I'm so excited to see those guys go to work. And I think that they're, they're going to be the foundation of that defense. And uh, I mean, I just don't see us being a defense that drops out of the top five in pretty much every single category because our front is just loaded. Now, onto the linebackers. And, you know, we kind of talked about them some. Um, you know, I noticed that Edwin Spillman looked like he was actually bigger than Jeremiah T. Lander. We love Jeremiah T. Lander's size, his speed, you know, his passion for the game. So that was interesting, okay? I really think that that room is going to be some very interesting battles. Uh, Keenan Pilly, you know, um, I didn't really get to see him very much, but we already know what he's going to bring to the table. Hope that he can stay healthy. Um, and yeah, you know, Jalen Smith is a guy that I'll keep a very close eye out on as well. I think that that room is going to just be phenomenal. Okay, now let's get on to the cornerbacks. We didn't really get to see them go, but, you know, I'm still going to say that um, guys like Ricky Gibson, uh, guys like Jermaud McCoy, probably going to be your starters there. What does Christian Conyer and uh, Jordan Matthews give you, right? Like, I want to see that. Those are two more guys that I feel like could most definitely play at a very, very high level. And you never know from year to year, somebody might take a gigantic leap forward and end up passing a guy like Ricky Gibson. But I don't see Jermaud McCoy being a player that will end up getting passed up. I listened to him talk some um, with Austin Price. And uh, man, you want to talk about a guy that just gets it. You can tell that he's, Kind of got that old school mentality. Uh, and he just reminds me of kind of like a throwback corner. Very, very confident in himself. You know, he's got a, uh, you know, he's got some high expectations for himself. And yeah, I most definitely see him being all SEC and, you know, probably a potential future first round draft pick once that time comes for him. But we've also got uh, the transfer from Temple and Jalen McMurray. I want to see him. You know, I think he's probably going to be playing more cornerback just because of his size. That's kind of what I've been hearing. So probably won't be much of a star player, but yeah, he could probably do some things there at corner as well. Just a whole lot of really good players, okay? We haven't talked about Caleb Beasley in a long time. He's another one. He's got prototype size, and I think he could come in and contribute as well. So that's another position that's extremely deep on this team. And uh, yeah, I think that we'll get a whole lot of interceptions. The windows are going to be a lot tighter on the outside. And that leads us to the star position. Jordan Thomas looks like a linebacker out there, and that makes me so happy. He's definitely gained some weight. I'd say he's probably gained 8 to 10 pounds since the end of the season, and you didn't think that he could fail out anymore, but he definitely he looks like a warrior out there. So I have him starting at the star position, um, but, you know, we'll see because there's other players that could maybe fight for that position. Christian Charles, well, I think, probably would have been one of them, but he's going to be so limited that it's going to be tough, I feel like, for him to compete with Jordan Thomas. Now, Boo Carter was another player that we thought could, you know, get a good look at the star position. But from what I saw, he was working with the safeties. And I love what I saw from Boo, first and foremost. Okay, he's a guy that, I mean, you know, he looks thick. You know, he looks like he's physically ready to come out there and play. Probably at about five, ten and a half, you know, maybe about 5'11", just a shade up under six feet tall. So he could play star. Maybe he even could play safety. I love the way he looks going through those drills. I mean, he just looks so fluid, so smooth, great hips, great burst, great hands, the the works. But we'll know a lot more about Boo Carter once those pads come on. Can he continue to play with the same type of a physical prowess that we saw from him in his high school film? And I think that he can. Um, he was also working as a return specialist with Coach Eckler. You know, he's getting some one-on-one -on -one time there. That's what I was reading. So we all know that he's going to be one of the guys that 
I think it's going to be him, probably uh, Deshaun Bishop and Peyton Lewis will be the, some of the guys that will get some good looks back there uh, as return specialists. So expect a lot from Boo Carter this season. I think that he's got an opportunity to get on the field on uh, on offense, defense, and special teams. I think he's a very, very special talent. Now, for the rest of the safeties, Andre Turrentine, okay, he looks about the same as he did in our bowl game, you know, and I think that he really stepped up a lot in that bowl game. He looked a lot more physical. But can he win the other starting position next to Kobe Thomas, who I think will for sure be one of the starters? Kobe Thomas looks great, okay, about 6'2", probably about 205-ish pounds. And he's a guy that, man, I mean, he's got really good hips, really good feet. Uh, you know, he's got good hands, and he's passionate about the game. He's going to be a thumper once those pads come on. So really looking forward to that, but I think he's going to be one of the starters. Now, John Slaughter, we didn't get to see much of him, uh, you know, going through these practices and uh, or going through this practice today. But he's another one, right? So right now between him and Andre Turnton and I guess Boo Carter, you got to throw him into that mix too. Who is going to win that, uh, you know, starting safety role next to Kobe Thomas? We'll see. And then also Christian Harrison, who's the son of Rodney Harrison, who played for the Patriots at safety for a long time, one of, you know, several Super Bowls with them. He was one of those guys that struck fear, okay, in wide receivers and tight ends and running backs throughout the entire league because if you came across that middle, he was going to make you pay. Um, and hopefully we'll see some of that from Christian Harrison as well. I would love to see him get thrown into the rotation, get thrown into the mix somewhere. But for me, I would like to see him maybe move back to star or like we've got to find someone to play at star behind uh, Jordan Thomas because I don't see a whole lot of necessarily death right there. It seems like everyone has kind of moved to, you know, everywhere else. And it seems like right now it's just Jordan Thomas by itself. But it's still so early that, you know, we really can't tell what's what and, you know, why players are where they are. But we'll be able to make probably heads and tails of it, uh, I would say, by this time or probably like by the end of next week. So looking forward to all of it, y'all. But I'm overall, I'm just very, very excited about this team. And y'all should be, too. That's going to be it for this one. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer friends. We're going to have a whole lot of videos coming out here uh, because, I'll, you know, obviously we've got baseball season going on and we've got March Madness going on. So it's going to be rapid fire, but y'all stick with us, please. And thank you, as always, for staying all the way to the end. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.